everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Cafe. My name is Isaac, and we are back with a brand new mod pack. Today, we are playing Feed the Beast Beyond, the newest mod pack from the Feed the Beast team. It's their brand new flagship 1.10 mod pack that just released last week. Uh, it's a successor to Feed the Beast Infinity, their flagship 1.7 mod pack. Uh, currently, we are rocking, I think, about... 182 mods in total if i'm not mistaken it might be 183 or 181 somewhere around that point uh, is the current number of mods in the mod pack uh, this is basically just a bigger version of feed the beast infinity light which due to some questionable naming schemes on the part of feed the beast is actually kind of the light version of this mod pack feed the beast infinity light is the light version of feed the beast beyond not the light version of feed the beast infinity which was a 1.7 pack but Feed the Beast's confusing naming schemes aside, uh, we're here in the newest mod pack, and what I want to work on in today's episode, of course, is we're going to start out with the basic stuff. Uh, we're going to get ourselves a crafting station, and we're going to stick that down. We do have Tinker's Construct installed, as always. Uh, a quick run-through of the mods list. We've got a lot of mods uh, that you'll be familiar with from 1.7.10. Uh, things like Thermal Expansion, things like Ender IO, things like Extra Utilities. Obviously, now that's updated to Extra Utilities 2. Uh, we've got Applied Logistics. We've got Refined Storage, as well as Applied Logistics not quite sure why they put both in there i think it was mostly just to give people the option of which to choose we're probably going to go with applied energistics in this series just because from my experience in sky factory 3 with uh, refined storage it's been a little bit buggy uh, which is not the best especially when we're playing on a server like this we've also got blood magic uh, don't have any thorncraft we do have batania uh, there are a couple of mods missing as well that haven't yet ported over or maybe just aren't going to port over uh, from 1.7 uh, thorncraft i believe is coming uh, i know that there's a, a version of it for 1.8 and also for 1.9 and i think there's also a version of it coming for 1.10 uh but things like mine factory reloaded are currently not in the pack and we don't have mods like thermal dynamics either so we do have thermal expansion uh, which only just recently released uh, just as this mod pack came out it was one of the mods that was kind of holding this mod pack back from being released but we do have thermal expansion installed but we don't have uh, thermal dynamics installed so we have the thermal expansion machines but we don't have the the thermal expansion cables but uh, we do have a multitude of other mods of course add their own power conduits and item cables and fluid transfer systems and stuff like that uh, and then we've also got a bunch of new mods as well that i think are unique to 1.10 there were some in here that i was uh, that i saw whilst i was looking through earlier uh, that i'm not quite familiar with we did have uh, deep resonance that we, we played around with that a little bit in feed the beast infinity light but uh, there were also a bunch of mods that have ported over but also changed a couple of things uh, thermal expansion is actually a pretty good example of a mod that has for the most part stayed the same in its port from 1.7 to 1.10 but has has made a couple of changes here and there just to spice things up just a little bit and make the mod just a little bit different uh, to what it was in 1.7 and there were quite a few mods that have done the same thing as well you know extra utilities 2 uh, is obviously a big one that's changed quite a bit from extra utilities 1 over in in 1.7.10 but uh, enough gabbing on about the mods and the mod pack what we're going to work on in today's episode is of course we're going to start off uh, going to do a little bit of mining here going to get enough stone to make myself a pickaxe and my goal for today's episode is to get some early game all doubling automated and up and running i don't know how automated it's going to be uh, but i would like to get some early game all doubling up and running now uh, i'm not going to use some of the more traditional all doubling techniques as i mentioned before we do have a uh, thermal expansion installed so we could go with a pulverizer and a redstone furnace we also have enderite installed so we could go with a sag mill and an alloy smelter but i like to mix things up and so i'm gonna start playing around with a mod that i've played around a little bit with in sky factory 3 but for the most part i haven't really touched all that much and that mod is actually additions which was available in 1.7 but i actually never saw it in any packs i might have just missed it i've only actually recently seen it in sky factory but i want to start this series by getting a crusher as well as i think it's called a smelter let me just check this real quick i'm pretty sure that it's called Called a smelter although it would seem that i am wrong let's go quickly over to at actually additions it is this thing here the powered furnace so we're going to get ourselves a crusher and a powered furnace the crusher is used to to break down the ores into two dust it's like your pulverizer or your sag mill and the powered furnace is of course just a furnace that will smelt things when given redstone flux and so uh, what i'm going to do here guys just to kind of skip over a lot of the boring stuff and also it is getting quite dark here i'm going to go away i'm going to do some mining i'm going to cut down some more trees i'm going to get some nice early game resources here uh, so that we can kick things off we are going to need to get uh, some redstone in order to get the crusher 
actually, because if I quickly show you the recipe here uh, for the crusher, we need two of these redstonia crystals, which require some redstone as well as the atomic reconstructor, uh, which we'll get into in just a little bit here. But uh, just a heads up, I'm going to go down as far as redstone uh, and try and get some of that as well. So I'm going to go where I'm going to take care of the early game grind and I'll be back in a second. You know, I normally really don't like the 1.10 auto jump feature, but when you're climbing stairs in the early game like this, when you've got just like a really poor mine going on, it's really nice to have. It is really nice to have. But uh, I'm back real quick because we managed to get ourselves uh, a little bit of Certus Quartz before we actually found any of our iron. I have actually had some really bad luck uh, with iron down there. I've gone down to like Y level 30, I think, uh, and haven't managed to find. I found four iron at Y level 30, which is uh, not the best thing in the world. Not already. I am flipping fed up of having that auto jump on. Let me quickly just turn that off. Um, and so uh, one thing we are going to do real quick before we get into our kind of more automated system for uh, for audibling is we're going to make ourselves the applied energistics quartz grindstone this thing is real cheap it's three certus quartz or three nether quartz we're going to use certus quartz because we've got it lying around uh, three stone two cobblestone and then one wooden gear which is quite simply uh, just four sticks unfortunately we've only got three sticks i'm not quite sure how we ended up with three sticks but that is fine i haven't made a sword yet so i'm not quite sure how we ended up with three sticks whatsoever but uh, if we go ahead and do something like this and then we get ourselves some more sticks and actually uh, three works out quite quite nicely here because we can do something like that and get ourselves the wooden crank and then if we take this thing stick it into the grindstone like so kapow and kaboom we can go ahead and throw our iron ore in there manually grind it and that is going to double our iron ore in the early game which is going to be really nice for making tools and getting some basic armor up and running but with that guys i'm going to go away again i'm going to do some more mining and i'll be back in a second okay so quite a long time later and i've actually done a lot more mining than i initially planned to do and that is because because I was looking for some black quartz ore. Uh, because if we look at the recipe for the crusher here, and actually uh, quite a lot of recipes from actual editions, you need to make the iron casing. And to make this, you need black quartz, which can be made by crafting together nether quartz and coal. However, if we go over the page, it shows here that it can also be made by smelting black quartz ore, which, if we click on that, uh, can be found between Y level 0 and 45 except that it can't because after an hour of mining trying to find at least one piece of this black quartz ore i decided to check the configs of the mod pack and it turns out uh, that black quartz ore has been disabled and is not actually mineable down in the mines whatsoever and so instead we are going to have to build the nether portal go through to the nether get some nether quartz from there and then craft that with some coal in order to get the black quartz that we need in order to make some of the machines from actual additions which is a bit of an issue because we only have four diamonds and i don't really want to use three of them making a diamond pickaxe that we'll only use for the obsidian really we'll probably replace it with a tinker's construct pickaxe fairly soon and so what i'm going to do instead i'm going to come over to the furnace and i'm going to make four iron buckets and i'm actually going to craft the obsidian using a recipe that i think is added by industrial craft 2 which i forgot to mention uh, is in the mod list but if we quickly look here uh, at obsidian we can actually craft obsidian by using two buckets of water and two buckets of lava and we do get the buckets back every time we do the craft and so uh, what i'm going to do real quick here is i'm going to grab uh, actually i'm going to first of all empty some of my inventory out into this chest because we already are way too full up here and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab two buckets of water enough to make an unlimited water source i'm going to head on down into the mines to find a pool of lava and i'm going to use that pool of lava in conjunction with the unlimited water source to craft enough obsidian to make another portal and i'll be back in a second and again not too long later we've now got enough obsidian to make a nether portal as well as a little bit of extra obsidian for some crafting a little bit later on in today's episode so so that was a mistake for now i'm gonna go ahead and throw this down right about uh, here should be fine is that right oh i built this too small that's perfect okay so now that we've got that let me quickly whip up a flint and steel like so uh, and all we have to do now is quickly grab ourselves some nether quartz and we should be good to go uh, to craft pretty much everything that i want to make from actually additions so uh, it would appear that we have arrived at somebody else's nether portal i don't think that we can craft. This is where my uh, lack of vanilla knowledge is going to come uh, into the daylight here. I don't think that we can mine nether quartz with a cobblestone pickaxe, but as it turns out, we totally can. And so I'm going to quickly grab a little bit of this stuff here. We don't actually need all that much of it uh, because we need one for, I think only one for each machine, but I'm going to get just a bit extra just in case we need it. All right. So now that we've got the nether quartz and we can actually go ahead and craft that together with our normal coal like so uh, to get ourselves some of that much needed a black quartz we should now be able to actually get our basic audibling system up and running so 
the first thing we're going to need is some kind of generator. Now, uh, we're going to start out, if I can actually spell generator, uh, we're going to start out with the coal generator from Actual Editions, but hopefully, by the end of today's episode, we're going to move up to the oil generator. The oil generator is going to take us a little bit more time to automate, but once we do get it automated, it's going to provide a much more redstone flux than the coal generator can. And so, let me go ahead and craft up something like this. We are going to need a little bit more iron, thankfully. Uh, I did use my grindstone a little bit whilst I was away, and we're also are going to need quite a few more sticks because we do need quite a few of these uh, iron casings here for all the machines. So I'm going to go ahead and for now make four, and uh, we might need a fifth one, but we can get to that when the situation arises. For now, uh, let me go ahead and craft up the coal generator. It is getting dark. Hopefully, uh, we should probably actually uh, quickly craft up a couple of torches here just to light up uh, the area around us so we don't get bombarded with mobs every time it gets a little bit dark. And also, uh, we will, of course, build a full-on base at some point, but for now, uh, let me just do a little bit of this. It's probably not going to be the best, and also, uh, this very handily placed berry bush has been been helping me quite a lot in my efforts to not die also this is not fantastic whatsoever let me just see if i can kite these guys away <coughs> let me see if i can't just kite these guys far enough away and then maybe run back and uh, we can attack them i do have a wooden sword which i should almost certainly upgrade to at least a cobblestone maybe even an iron sword oh my goodness this is not good this is not good ah okay Okay, now that that's taken care of, where were we? We've got a coal generator, and uh, let's go ahead and for now, I guess, throw that down right about there, which probably also clear out a little bit of space around here, and also my inventory is getting chock full of stuff. You know what? Real quick side tangent here. Uh, I'm going to quickly make yet another item that is from Actual Editions. I'm going to make the small storage crate. This is basically a chest, but much bigger than a normal chest, and it's real easy to make. It's just four of any plank, four chests, and then one wooden casing, which is just some more wood and some sticks. Okay, boom, there we go. We get ourselves a small storage crate, which, uh, again, for the time being, we will throw down right about there, and boom! As you can see, this thing is significantly bigger than a normal vanilla chest, giving us much more space, like so. By the way, space bar and left click is how you move, like, big chunks of your inventory like that. Uh, you can also do the same with the hotbar, if you so wish. Uh, for now, though, I am going to go ahead and keep a couple of these items on me, uh, as well as some iron, some wood, some coal, and, of course, uh, that black quartz as well. So, uh, let me also actually quickly throw some coal into here so we can start generating some power. I'm not quite sure how much this generates by default i think it might be either 20 or 40 rf per tick unfortunately uh, it's one of the few machines that doesn't actually tell us how much uh, redstone flux it is producing but I think that it should be enough uh, for us to make ourselves our first crusher here, uh, which is super easy to make. But before we can make it, uh, we do need to make these redstoneia crystals, which, as I mentioned before, are crafted using the Atomic Reconstructor, which sounds a lot harder to make than it is. If we click on the recipe here, you can see that all we need to make it is four redstone, four iron, and then another one of those iron casings, which we did already make and we have in here. And so, uh, if we bring all that stuff together, we should be fairly easily able to make ourselves at least one of the Atomic Reconstructor. We are going to need a lever in order to make this thing work, and we're also are going to want to have a redstone torch so that we can toggle the way that the atomic reconstructor works. I will show you how we do that uh, in a second here. So, uh, this thing, really simply, for now, I guess we'll put it here because it does require power. All we're going to do, we're going to quickly right click on it, and you can see there it says there redstone mode, and you can use a right click with a redstone torch to toggle it. By default, it is in the deactivation mode, which means that it will send out a beam every couple of seconds, given that it has enough redstone flux to do so. We don't want it to do that, we don't want to waste our redstone flux like that we want to be able to send out a signal when we flick the lever and so we want to change it to pulse mode and now all we need to do is throw down some redstone i'm going to throw down about 30 because we do need quite a lot of these redstone here crystals flick the lever that's going to zap the redstone and turn it into these redstone here crystals and so now if we come back over to our crafting station we should uh, be fairly easily able to make ourselves at least the tier one crusher here we are going to need some flint and i don't think that we have any gravel in here right now let me have a quick check we do not but uh, thankfully we do have a little bit of gravel uh, just over the pond and there is a crafting recipe uh, to craft three gravel into one flint and so if we quickly grab six gravel from over here we can then go ahead and craft it up into the two pieces of flint that we need, and then I'm pretty sure that we have everything we need in order to make ourselves a crusher. We do need these basic coils. These are made with yet more redstone here crystals and yet more black quartz, uh, which is why I made extra of both of those. Do we not have... Uh, ooh, we don't quite have enough black quartz to continue here. Let me just do a little bit more. Actually, I'm going to craft all of this up uh, into black quartz once we pick the coal up like so, because I don't... Oh, my... That's not what I want to do. <laughs> That is not at all what I want to do. Hopefully, we can craft that back up. Can we use this back into normal coal? 
We can. Okay, thank goodness. That would not have been uh, a good thing whatsoever. So now we've got some more black quartz. Let's come back over here and let's craft up two of these basic coils. Once we've got those, let's go ahead and craft up the crusher like so with a little bit of cobblestone. And now we can go ahead and throw that down for now right next to the, uh, the coal generator uh, so that it can receive power directly from it. Uh, and basically what this does is the exact same thing as our grindstone does over here, but it doesn't require us to stand at the wooden crank constantly turning it in order to turn one iron ore or any ore into two of that ore's respective dusts all we have to do is throw it into the crusher and it will work for us at turning one ore into two dusts nice so now all we have to do is automatically smelt that and put it into a chest to have an automatic system that turns ores into double the amount of ingots and for that we are of course going to need the powered furnace that we looked at a little bit earlier in today's episode for this and uh, we do need some other items we need some familiar items like the basic coils which we can make fairly easily like so we also need some furnaces which are super easy to make as well as a little bit more cobblestone but we also need two of these anorite crystals i'm not quite sure if i'm pronouncing that right whatsoever uh, but thankfully these again are super easy to make it's just one piece of iron in front of the atomic reconstructor and so again uh, i'm going to take a little bit extra iron just in case we need some more of those crystals later on we'll throw that down we'll give it a quick zap that's going to turn those into crystals you can do that uh, in block form you can actually just make uh, you can use this block of nri crystals uh, you can get that by throwing down a block of iron in front of the atomic reconstructor however it does cost more to do it this way I thought that it would be cheaper to do it a block at a time, but you can see that a block of iron requires 800 redstone flux, whereas a single piece of iron only requires 80, and of course 800 is 10 times 80, whereas there are only 9 ingots of iron inside of a block, and so it is cheaper to actually do it one ingot at a time instead of doing it in block form, but nevertheless, now that we have those crystals, we can go ahead and craft up the powered furnace like so, which we're going to go ahead and throw down right about here. Now, the problem with this setup is that the powered furnace is currently not getting any kind of power, and also... Uh, the powered furnace is not receiving the items from the crusher and so what i think we're gonna have to do first things first is move the powered furnace probably mm, actually i'm thinking about moving the crusher up one so we can put a hopper underneath it and have all of the uh, the dusts move out of the uh, the crusher through and into the powered furnace but that also creates about as many problems as it solves because now our crusher is also not receiving any power but thankfully actually additions also adds in what are known as relays and these are going to allow us to transfer energy items and fluids from one place to another using lasers and so what i'm going to do i'm going to get rid of this real quick we are going to craft up a hopper we do have enough iron to do so so let me quickly go ahead and whip up a chest actually we got a chest because i just got rid we can get rid of this one let me pick up this chest we don't have a hatchet but that is fine we can go ahead take this craft it up with some iron like so hopefully everybody knows how to make a hopper like that and so now we can go ahead and throw this down right about here and now all of the dust that are produced by the crusher should go straight into the powered furnace and then we can do the same thing with the powered furnace we can put another hopper beneath it and another chest right about there and that will automatically pull all of the ingots out of the powered furnace and into the chest now to make these relays we need to craft up four obsidian two blocks of redstone two redstone crystals and one advanced coil this is why i crafted up some extra obsidian earlier on in the episode the advanced coil is just a normal basic coil with some golden nuggets and so uh, i don't think we actually have uh, any gold just yet but we did get uh, one piece of pulverized gold from putting the iron ore through the crusher it does give out byproducts occasionally uh, if we press u on iron ore for instance and we go over to the crusher you can see that there is a 20 percent chance when crushing iron ore that we get an extra pulverized gold as well which is pretty nice and there are also other ores that have secondary uses as well but for now let's go ahead and smelt up the gold ore that's going to get us uh, all that we need for the advanced coil whilst we wait we can go ahead and craft up the two blocks worth of redstone it is a little bit expensive actually and especially the fluid and item relays to make the fluid relay you need the previous tier of relay the energy relay and then to make the item relay you need the fluid relay so they kind of go through it's just putting them through the atomic reconstructor with 2000 redstone flux which does make them a pretty expensive way of transferring power items and fluids but once you put them down you'll see that they're a lot better at transferring items power and fluids over long distances uh, because of the way that the laser relays work but uh, let's come back into here let me quickly grab some of the obsidian then we can grab our golden ingot craft that up into some nuggets like so that's going to allow us to make the coil once we do something like this and this and finally we can craft up all of the energy relays and so the way that these work is we can put down one 
right about there. I'm fairly certain that I can put one there. I think those will connect through that block. And then we can put a final one down right about there. Now, to connect these up, we are going to need what is known as the laser range. This is, again, made up of stuff that we've already seen before, the advanced coils and the crystals. So let me quickly make one of those. And then once we've got this, all we have to do is shift right click onto one of these and connect it to the other one by another shift right click. And so now, what this should be doing, you can see at the top there in, in, in Willow, it's pulling out all the redstone flux from here and trans transferring it over into the crusher. We can do the same thing with this one and this one. And now we can send the power from the coal generator through to the crusher and also through to the powered furnace. You'll see that both of these are sharing in the amount of power that they receive. I believe by default, it does distribute the power evenly. It doesn't distribute it, for example, to the crusher first, although I could be wrong about that. But now what we can do is we can throw our ores into the crusher, then they will automatically get sent down into the hopper, through into the powered furnace. And then if we make another hopper real quick here, and also uh, let me just quickly turn off uh, weather sounds because I'm really not a fan. And actually, also, we do have Optifine installed. So let me uh, get rid of the rain and snow. If we turn that off, things become a lot nicer. Uh, let me go ahead and craft up a couple more chest so we can make ourselves another hopper here real quick. And and kind of fully automate this setup. It's a little bit janky, and I would like to, where possible, uh, replace some of these hoppers with the item relays, or maybe even some uh, item conduits from another mod at some point in the fairly near future, because they are a little bit vanilla for my tastes, but uh, they do work for the time being. So let me grab those. Let me grab some more of the iron that is smelting up over here. Let's craft up two more hoppers, like so, as well as uh, two more chests as well, because I would like to have one chest uh, that we can put all of our ores into, and one chest that receives the final ingots so we're going to throw down one chest right about there let me go ahead and throw down the hopper next to it like so and then finally we're going to have another hopper that goes there with a chest above it like that and now all we have to do is put all of the ores that we have into that chest and they should automatically get processed into double the amount of ingots and we don't have to do any work whatsoever which is pretty nice so now that we've done that i did mention that i want to work a little bit on the oil generator so this is kind of a bit of a step up from the basic coal generator and the way that we make this is with two iron cases six cobblestone and one canola which is harvested from the canola plant which you can actually find uh, around in the world here i think we do have a couple of these nearby i can see one just over there let me quickly see about making myself an iron sword here actually so that i don't die to these skeletons again uh, but i think i see some canola just behind the skeleton we do have the new 1.10 attack mechanics so we do have to watch out just a little bit oh my no we're gonna die we're gonna we're so dead we are <laughs> we're so dead Okay, so a little bit of dying later, and this is the plant that I was talking about, the canola seeds. If we go ahead and break this, we get ourselves a couple of pieces of canola as well as some canola seeds. So we actually grow more of this canola. So now that we've got that, do we have enough iron casing to make the oil generator. I don't think that we have any more iron casing. We don't. Thankfully, uh, we do have some iron that is coming through here, albeit a little bit slowly. The powered furnace uh, does uh, smelt up two items at a time, but unfortunately, uh, right now, the coal generator is a, out of coal, but also, uh, I don't think capable of producing... Oh, gosh, I thought we were going to die there. Uh, also, I don't think capable of producing enough redstone flux to run both of these machines simultaneously, uh, which is why we're working on the oil generator. So, uh, if we come back over here, do we have what it takes to make these i think that we do we just need a couple more sticks which we have uh oh no we're missing one iron ingot which we should now have over here we do good stuff let's go ahead and craft up the other iron casing like so and then we can fairly easily craft up the oil generator nice so we'll put this thing down uh for now i guess we do have one spare laser relay so i guess what we can do is we can put it here and then just connect it up to the system like so and so now we need to actually pump oil into the generator in order to start producing some redstone flux and the most basic form of oil that we can get is from the canola seed if we press u the first item on here is the canola press and this is used to turn canola into canola oil that we can then pump into the oil generator to produce power this is made with another one of the nri crystals and all right crystals i'm still not quite sure how you pronounce that let me know in the comment section down below if you do uh, the canola and the advanced coil we should still have some gold in here and we do uh, we are running a little bit low on resources though do we have what it takes to make another one of these we do not we're a little bit low on the crystals thankfully and uh, we can make some more of those fairly easily i think we should have enough redstone flux uh, built up in the atomic reconstructor we do indeed let's do a quick zap of that thank you very much and now if we come back over to our crafting station do we have what it takes to make the basic coil and then craft that up into the advanced coil we do indeed we've already got the crystals and so we should be able to go ahead 
and crafted the canola press. Nice. Now, I don't know if this requires power, but just to be on the safe side, I am going to go ahead and put it, I think, just like right about there. Uh, it does indeed require power. And what this will allow us to do is turn the canola into a liquid. Now, we do need to move this liquid into the oil generator here, which might prove a little bit tricky, especially if we don't have any kind of fluid transfer. Now, uh, we could make some more of these energy laser relays and turn them into fluid laser relays to transfer the uh, the liquid from the canola press into the oil generator, but as I mentioned before, they are a little bit expensive, especially for transferring liquid short distances, and instead, I think it would be much more sensible uh, to use the fluid conduits from Ender.io, which are a lot cheaper to make. For these, we just need six conduit binder, which is made by a smelting binder composite, which is made with sand, gravel, and clay, as well as three quite clear glass, which we can make by putting normal glass into a chisel. And so what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go away real quick. I'm going to get some sand, gravel, and clay, and I'll be back in a second. And not too long later, now that we have everything that we need for the binder composite, we can go ahead and smelt that up in the furnace here. I have gone ahead and already smelted up the three glass that we need. Uh, however, we do need quite clear glass. And so uh, if we quickly craft up the chisel, we can quickly throw the glass in to quickly change it into quite clear glass from Endryo. You can also make that using the alloy smelter, but the alloy smelter uh, is a little bit more expensive to make. And any second now, we should have enough conduit binder to make the conduit. We do. Uh, let me go ahead and grab that, craft it up like so. And then these work very simply. All we have to do is throw one down like this. And you can see already by default, it's pulling them out. Uh, if you want to be more specific, we can right click on this side and set it to extract. And we want it to extract uh, without a redstone signal. So we want it to always extract. And then over on this side, we want to set this one to insert. That's going to pull all of the canola oil around and in it to the oil generator, which is going to begin to produce 40 redstone flux per tick, uh, consuming that canola oil and providing power for all of our other machines. And the cool thing about this is that we can essentially grow our power because what we're going to do is we're going to plant down these canola seeds. If we get ourselves a hoe real quick like so and uh, we can plant down the canola seeds i'm going to use a cobblestone hoe and i think we should have maybe some bones lying around we do and so if we go ahead and quickly craft up some bone meal what we can do is we can go ahead and hoe some ground we should probably do it near water but for now this is just for an example we can plant the canola we can bone meal it up to full growth like so we can then go ahead and harvest it that's going to get us some more of that canola which we can again put into the canola press and again we can just repeat this process over and over and over again and of course we don't actually need the bone meal in order to make this work we can just set up a larger farm to get a good constant supply of canola to make sure that the oil generator is constantly full of oil for a nice renewable early game power source and the really cool thing about the oil generator is that it doesn't stop with canola oil you can actually upgrade the canola oil to produce more redstone flux if we look in the actual editions manual here we can see in the bottom left that the canola oil can be used in an oil generator it displays the amount of power that it generates in our case 40 redstone flux per tick however it can be upgraded further to yield more power than that for starters you can put it to a fermenting barrel to to convert the canola oil into oil, which by default you can then put into the oil generator to produce more redstone flux, but you can then take it even further. If you're still not satisfied with the power it generates, place it on the ground and throw in a crystallized canola seed to make crystallized oil, which produces even more power than normal oil. And if that isn't enough for you, make empowered canola seeds, toss that into some crystallized oil to get empowered oil, which is the highest tier of oil that you can put into this oil generator. Uh, and so what my plan is over the next couple of episodes is to get a nice canola farm up and running hopefully automated and then use that uh, and set up a kind of a production line that turns that basic canola oil into higher tiers of oil to use in the oil generator which will hopefully power our base for the early game but with that guys i'm going to end this first episode of feed the beast beyond there if you did enjoy the video be sure to hit like it really does help out a lot subscribe if you haven't done so already and be sure to hit that little bell next to the subscription button to be the first to be notified when a new video goes out again thank you for watching and i will see you guys next time